Hello, everybody. Thank you for having us in today's show with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, the expert in immigration cases uh, with over 45 years of experience in this immigration law and also in this field working and helping thousands of families every single year, every month, uh, thousands of approvals, hundreds of approvals every single month to the law firm of Margaret W. Wong and Associates. And she has been working on this field for over 45 years, and she has offices in nine cities of the United States. So please join us today, ask your questions. Uh, feel free to ask your question free live right now, and she will be answering your immigration um, concerns today. Hello, Ms. Wong. Thank you for having us today. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And well, as it's getting a little warmer here in the city of Atlanta, I know the uh, it's getting it's still cold there in Cleveland uh, for a little bit. The cold weather is not going yet. But uh, one of the main things that um, we have been talking about lately has been the um, Title 42. Uh, President Biden or or the administration. Uh, tried to stop the Title 42, but now a federal judge stopped that decision. What that uh, what does this mean to the immigration world, uh, to the immigrants trying to come in to the United States? Title 42 is really very much a very old law. It's about health care. It's about health. It's not about immigration. The basic thing about Title 42 is that because uh, anytime you have a serious like uh, like virus like this uh, COVID, um, Title 42 means that we cannot let people come in. So Trump had been very, very serious on Title 42. And that's one point I sort of agree with Trump because you could, uh, Title 42 means that because of this public health issue in America, whoever comes to America should have like, uh, you know, double check with their virus, double check that they bring in the germs. It's like if the cows and the pigs and the dogs have virus, you couldn't import them. So we eat them. That's Title 42. But right now, uh, with President Biden, actually Biden, I think, also agrees with Title 42, but now the public and the media is trying to say, even if Title 42 is still the law, people should be allowed to come in uh, in spite of the public health. That's really Title 42. It's not a very big discussion is very much in line with the remain in uh, Mexico, that if you may be carrying germs or viruses, you should get them all tested before you come to America. That's Title 42. Oh, that yeah. we do, we would not, we should not let people come in with the germs. It's not oh. an immigration question. It's a very health issue. It's a public health issue. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this uh coming and clarifying this because a lot of people are uh, concerned about this decision of stopping the, the Title 42 um, release. Uh, so we're already getting some questions from our audience. Please don't forget that Ms. Wong is traveling across the country. Uh, and if you want to meet her, if you want to see her, you just need to call 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. And the first question today is a person from Guatemala, Ms. Wong. Uh, he says, I entered to the United States five months ago on a B1, B2 visitor visa. I am 17 years old. My dad lives in the United States and my mom lives in Guatemala. I currently live with my dad. I will turn 18 on September this year. I was wondering if I could do juvenile status. What do you recommend? I was, I was also threatened in Guatemala where someone sent me a bullet in an envelope saying that it was that I was hurting their business and I should stop or they would use one of those for me. Um, well, yeah. 
So you're asking two questions. Number one, can you do the dependency action, SIJ or water of court? The answer is, as you, if you live in a state that allows water of court under 18, you need to finish the, the dependency action or water of court before you were 18, which is coming up in September. But you need that six months jurisdiction. You have only been here five months. So I don't necessarily think you'll make it because you're already made. Five, uh, you need six months. Most states require six months jurisdictional and you cannot waive it. So you couldn't do it until June or July and you have to only to September. In order to win what of court, you need to be neglected, abused or, or abandoned by one of the parents in some states like uh, Franklin County, uh, Columbus, Ohio, they require abandoned by both. So it depends on the law of that state and who abandons you because the way you're speaking, I think you were not abandoned. Your wife, your father is in America. I don't know what status she he has. If he has a green card and if you already have tourist visa, I do recommend him to file immediately um, green card because uh, family 2A now is current. So you could get a green card as long as you're in status and do adjustment of status. But if your father have no status, then you could not do it. So that's the answer to your word of court. There are other states that allow under 21, but you have to have parent or both, one parent or both parents who neglected, abuse or abandoned. The second question you have is regarding asylum. Uh, because a bullet Pass you, it has to be the inability of the state to protect you. And did you report to police? If you did, what happened to the investigation? Did they catch the bad person? Did they put him in jail? And did he ran away? The inability of the government to protect the citizens, or because of nationality, race, um, um, nationality, race, religion, member of a special group, political opinion. So it has to be with those five grounds. You came on a tourist visa, which means that you're not poor because most people who speak another dialect or uh, marry different caste, they're poorer people because more, normally the upper middle class or middle class people come on tourist visa which means that uh, a lot of times immigration does look at it. If you want to file asylum, you can file within a year, but since your six months are coming up, you may want just to do an extension. It also doesn't hurt to look at a student visa because you're 17 years old. So you could do a change of status to a student visa. And that's what uh, I'm trying to use this program as a platform to advise our client base, uh, our world, that not everything has to be asylum, asylum, or ward of court. There's a lot of ways to stay legally in America. Uh, on the other hand, of course, you don't get a work permit because America is a beautiful country. Not everybody can just come in and get a work permit and, you know, and do all sorts of stuff. We could not do that. Um, we do need to abide our laws. Um, I hope I answer your questions. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And yeah, of course, uh, maybe this person could get in touch with you and call the office right now and get a clarification for his situation or get more details about what he can do in the immigration um, case that he could have. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216 uh, Ms. Wong, um, this is the next question. Hi, Mrs. Wong. Is it true that if I get my asylum, I can't go back to my country for 10 years? Yes. The question is, if I got a grant of asylum and got my green card based on asylum grant, is it true that I cannot go back? Yes, it's true because the whole case, the whole green card is based on telling the U.S. government that you have a fear of going back, then how come now that you got your green card, you could go back? The way to do it is you need to apply for citizenship after four years and nine, actually it's three years and nine months. And once you become a citizen, you will be able to travel. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And well, it's, uh, and I think maybe sometimes people take this um, like a specific time Ms. Wong, about 10 years, but maybe it could be more, it could be less. Uh, but is it actually recommended to go back to the country that you are fleeing from? 
uh, I don't recommend it because a lot of times, like uh, Europe, Europe now you can pass because of EU. You can go from one country to another. So Romania now is EU, Czechoslovakia, but in the old Croatia, they, they lost Croatia. But in the olden days, is part of this and that. So the whole world has changed. It's difficult. I do in in the years ago, people from India would go through Himalayas because the borders are very porous now they couldn't do it anymore so i really don't recommend that because um because it's not nice like if you're not gay you tell a country you're gay um it really sort of i know some of my clients don't like me because i i will tell them you know if you're not gay don't tell people you're gay because then you could never marry it's just not worth it for the status because sometimes you lose yourself because of certain misrepresentation or representation you have made to immigration it's just not worth it I think we lose your soul. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And yeah, this is very true. Please, if you need more advice, just uh, text us or call us to the office. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Ms. Wong, this is a question from a Venezuelan doctor. He says, I am a doctor from Venezuela. I just got TPS approved. My son is filing for my green card. My question is, what would be faster, my son's request or maybe a special visa for a doctor? Just got, that's awesome. I uh, Since you already have a TPS, uh, absolutely, that's TPS is actually better than an asylum because TPS is a status. Um, so you would not be able to do a TPS for a green card because there's no such law. It may one day, but not now. Um, I w there's no special visa for doctor, but what I want you to do, and listen to me, because I do do a lot of doctor's cases in America, and also people, your son is so smart. He's a medical doctor. Uh, wherever you're living, there's a, oh, like I live in Cleveland, Ohio, we have offices in nine other cities. You always call the State Department of Health or, or the board. Uh, uh, if you're a nurse, you call the Department of Nursing. If you're a doctor, call the medical boards. And as in that state, like in Ohio, what do you need to become a doctor? So first you have to pass um, UCFMAE. Um, one and two because you already have TPS. You don't need three because three you need to do H1B. It's complicated, but there's no special visa for doctor. And I think also because we are from Venezuela, so we are very smart, very, very highly educated people. There's only about 900,000 to a million green cards granted a year. I know everybody now because of the climate and stuff, they all want green cards. I think for now, enjoy the TPS check with the medical boards and see what you need, but I can tell you what you need. Matching starts on March 12th, it becomes March 15th. Before matching, you need to pass USME 1 and 2. If your, doc, if your son is already a doctor in Venezuela, I would do USME 2 first, because that's more clinical, and most of us, people like us, pass it as a lawyer, as a doctor. We have a lot of clinical experience. And then you need to study it, do one. Most people take one year off from their jobs. And, and also your beautiful mother, maybe have your son just get up every day at six o'clock in the morning, go to a library, study till 12 o'clock. He will pass within one year because we do a lot of um, Venezuelan doctors, a lot of Syrian doctors, a lot of Turkish doctors um, through the past 45 years. They will pass my own um, uh, cousin pass. Um, pass. That's what she did. Every morning at 5.30, she gets her tea in her bottle, she gets her lunch and dinner, she goes to the library and just sit there and study. In one year, she passed two and one because our English is not that good, but I'm sure your son is good because it's Venezuela. So you also, that to do three, you need that TOEFL, I'm sure your son will pass. So there's stuff you have to do, but check the local board. There's no special visa for doctor, but I don't think green card is the issue. The issue is remain being a doctor. And to do that, you need to pass all the testing, which is USMOE 1, 2, and 3. But because you have TPS, I don't think he needs three. He can get into a matching or pre-match or post-match by March by passing, uh, by passing 1 and 2. It depends on how old, because if you're older, it's hard to match, but you just have to do it. That's what people like us do. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And well, uh, is a... Um... It's a very interesting situation. This person has uh, several opportunities to 
to get a relief. So maybe a lot of people want to uh, to know what they could do, and some others are very lucky. I I just met a person uh, a few weeks ago, Miss One, that he has green card, and he says, "I don't want to have a green card. I want to travel and stay." over six months and he wants to know if if he could cancel his green card and just get a tourist visa i i, I don't understand why uh life is so unfair sometimes or well, i don't know why we are never happy with the blessings that we are receiving every single day so i could not understand uh, why this person would resign um, a green card I think a lot of us, because of the pandemic, because the mass resignation, people always are looking better because of the high salaries. Now people are commanding because there's a shortage of good workers. So if we get TPS, we want a green card. If we don't, if we came illegally um, and we have three children, we want a work permit. Now that we got a work permit, we want to get a social to file tax return. Now that we got work permit for a few years, now we want, how do we get a green card? You know, so it's, we never happy but in the meantime they're they're doing a beautiful business they're working for a great employer so i always tell my clients i mean nobody is perfect you know none of us could be so it took me 12 13 years to get green card and citizenship you know we all went through the same journey and god in that sense is pretty fair he doesn't forget us yeah He's that's good. True. yeah yeah that, thank you so much miss Wong, for this reflection um this next question is Hi, ma'am. I am from India. I have a gold company. It's 100% legal. And I have a nephew in India that I would like to come and help me. What is the best way to do it? He runs my business in India, but I want him here. That's very good. Gold prices went so much up. You can actually do an L1. L1, if you have a business that's interconnected, because a lot of my Indian clients have separate businesses. Because India, you can always don't pay too much tax. America, you have to report everything. So you do, you know. So as long as the company have at least 51% ownership, he could come Uh, with an L1A visa. If you come on an L1A and get a green card on the EB1A, if not, I would just have him come as a tourist visa, a student visa, because India is really not fair because it takes eight or nine years to get green card. There are only two good ways to come to America nowadays for Indian people. Number one is to come on L1A. If, sorry, I have a code. If not, go to uh, Canada and become a citizen and come in on the E2. <laughs> If not, do a EB, uh, do a uh, EB1 uh, based on intra-company transfer. And if not, um, I would try like to um, do the perm. Your company can actually hire him. It'll take 10 years, but if he's young enough, he doesn't mind waiting. The nice thing about a perm green card, which I'm recommending to a lot of my other clients because they're not from India, they're from like Mexico, um, Uh, Colombia and stuff. It takes only about one and a half, two years to get green card, but India takes nine years, which is bad. Okay, I see that, Ms. Wong, and thank you for this answer. Don't forget that if you want to talk to the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, uh, you just need to call the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. She has offices in nine cities of the United States, in Atlanta, Columbus, Cleveland, Chicago, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. She has been working on this field for over 45 years. That talks a lot about her experience, how she has built her major law firm, um, how this law firm has grown so much that, uh, you know, you can, you can just make sure that they are going to help you somehow to get a relief. And if there is no way to do it now, uh, they will let you know how to prepare for a just-in-case uh, something opens with the government or with the Supreme Court or with the uh, immigration system. So uh, you just need to make a call, make an appointment with her. The phone number is 216 279-3984-216-279-3984. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Um, the next question is, hello, my brother was deported last week to Egypt. 
because he has aggravated felony and his case is still pending in the circuit court. All of the families here, mom has citizenship. Can he come back to the United States? How can mom apply for family-based immigration visa? Yes, absolutely. Have There are two ways to come to America, regardless of deportation or first time. You either come on a non-immigrant visa as a tourist, as a student, as an E1 or something, or you come as an immigrant. In this type of cases, they'll never, never, never let you come on a tourist visa or student visa. Maybe after eight or nine years, they may give you an NIV waiver, non-immigrant visa waiver, but they won't. This is Egypt. They would never, never. So the next thing is absolutely about all the sisters and brothers, and you don't even need a lawyer to do that, so you don't need to waste legal fees. It's about five hundred some dollars to file an I one thirty. I would have all the sisters and brothers and moms and dads file. If the son is single, mom should file. That's the first thing. So, uh, because he was recently deported, you, number one, number two is you need to absolutely look at the case, see if it's a really aggravated felony, and also through that because it takes about. If it's a married son, it take, uh, for citizen parents, it takes about 10 to 12 years. If it's a single son, for, for citizen parents or green card parents, it takes four to six years. So as time gets, don't waste legal fee on this. You, you probably spend a lot of money. The next thing is at that time, check the code on the criminal issue. This is what we call, uh, call criminal aliens issues. So you need to check the criminal code. And this is a so I presume it's a state criminal law, but the appeal is with circuit court. So you have a fine, you have a final with a circuit, depends on what circuit you may win it. But make sure the lawyer is a very, very good writer. And also I would look at that aggravated felony because right now you the, in order to be deported, the, the criminal has to be in line with the federal criminal law, not just a state criminal law. So an aggravated felony, you never, never come back. That's a problem. So at least maybe reduce it to some sort of a crime of moral turpitude or what is the aggravated felony. Um, that's how you do it. But definitely file out cases like they were deported five or six years ago. Now they come and see us. Say, well, I said, did anybody file? I'm on 30. No. So what are you thinking? Oh, I don't know. People said he'll never come back. But file it. Because at that time, you go to interview. That's when when they give you the 221G letter. That's when you make your arguments. Now there's nothing. So everybody should file the I-130 now. Collect the files and maybe have your lawyer withdraw from circuit or maybe don't withdraw because circuit court may, may surprise you because now with Biden here, they're trying to change um, the circuit court, uh, uh, at least the color of the circuit court. The circuit court used to be all white collar people. Now we're trying to put some we, because I, I'm really pushing myself. Uh, we're trying to have some public defenders uh, work in a circuit court and stuff because they know the criminal system. Most people, including myself, we're not very good in the criminal system, you know, because most immigrants actually are very conservative when it comes to criminal law. So we're trying to change it. And we will. Yes. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Uh, well, good things are coming. Good things are coming. Ma uh, times may be tough, but in the in the worst times, uh, the best things come up. So we just need to remain standing. We need to keep our faith and keep the hope that everything is going to improve at some point. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Um, this person says, I am from Pakistan. Um, I, have a, I got asylum in the United Kingdom, and then I got my citizenship. Uh, but I was deported from the United States 15 years ago. Now I have the British citizenship. Can I use ESTA visa to go visit my family in the United States? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Number one, they probably, because nowadays ESTA versus uh, 10, 20 years ago, now they want you to pay the $12, $16. And every two years you have to get fingerprints. So I'm pretty sure when you file for the ESTA, and it's not just you, it's everybody. On the form, they'll ask you, do you have a criminal record? Were you ever deported? You have to say yes, 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 or when, however you're deported. Uh, they they would deny ESTA. Now you file the DS-160, uh, the tourist visa. Now it's, only, it's already 15 years ago. Normally, after 10 years, you can come back, except with a criminal record. It's just like that Egyptian question. 
is it aggravated felony? So it depends on when you're, how you're deported. So collect your file if they ask, did you, were you ever in immigration proceedings? Yes. Were you ever removed or deported? Yes. Um, after April 97, it's called removal. Before April 97, it's called deported. Uh, so you need to collect all the documents. Now, if you, they deny because of 214B, because you were you probably stayed here a long time, there's no appeal. So you have to refile to show ties. If they deny because of former deportation or 10-year bar, but you already left the country for 10 years because of 15 years ago. So it depends on the reason for denial. Now you file an NIV waiver. The nice thing about non-immigrant visa waiver is that you don't need a qualifying relative, which means that you don't have to have spouse, parents, or child to give you a waiver. So NIV waiver is also simpler than a uh, than a, than an IV waiver, immigrant visa waiver, because that you need a parent and spouse, and that's a harder waiver because you're coming back with a green card. Since I presume you have no American spouse, you have no American children, you have no American parents, your tourist visa should be approved. Not, I don't think they'll approve your ESTA, but your tourist visa, if you do it right, it should be approved. And also, you don't need a lawyer for this type of cases. Um, because it, it's not that difficult because it's been 15 years. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Um, well, if you need more information, just please give us a call. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Uh, this next question says, if Border Patrol wave you in without formal admission, can you use it for AOS? using the wave in? Yes, you could. It's getting harder and harder. Depends if you're actually from Canada or from Mexico, you need to file because there are two leading cases that, uh, but right now immigration is really tough. There was a time was easier, but absolutely do wave it. And depends on where you're from, uh, how did you get waved in and stuff like that. And were you a national of Canada or Mexico? And you know, did, were you sitting as in a passenger side in the front seat or you were hiding in the back of the truck? It all makes a difference. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And this is the question that uh, was coming right in uh, from Jasin Huri. Thank you so much for this question. Um, this next question is very interesting, Ms. Wong. My wife abandoned me with my kid. She, uh, she is a citizenship, but she is doing so bad stuff and drugs. My children are citizens. Can I do my papers? I am scared that I would have to leave them here with their mom. It depends on what country you're from. Some uh, immigration, I really think sometimes it's racist. I just represented a very wealthy, we represent a lot of wealthy Canadians. Whenever we do cases with them, it's so much easier because they look at the tax return, they look at their children, they look at them. You know, I, I think there's always a little bit racism. So with your case, a just because she's on drugs and bad stuff doesn't necessarily think she's a bad wife or she's an unfit parent. So, uh, and love is not slavery. So if she's not happy, um, I don't know if you watched the movie Kramer versus Kramer by Meryl Streep. I mean, she's my idol. I love Meryl Streep's movies. And that's exactly because there, there are days that as a wife, as a woman, we just want to give up everything and just give it up, you know, because life is too much. So, um, and I'm not saying you can't, it depends on the case. You may want to do an abuse case, but depends on, there's only two types of abuse, it's mental and physical, but these are hard questions, you know? And also um, just because she's bad stuff, it doesn't necessarily mean it affects the marriage, affects the relationship. And also I always remember love is not slavery. It doesn't mean you are tied to him or her. It also doesn't mean she's tied to you. But the fact that she abused, I mean, she abandoned the children. I wish the children were foreign born. We can get them a dependency actions, but they're American born. So we'll really have to look at the case and see how to advise. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And now that you mentioned Meryl Streep, um, did you watch her last movie uh, or oh, the, her most, yeah. the, the, the most recent one, the Don't Netflix. Look Up? Oh, no, no, no. I was thinking about Netflix. I haven't watched or whatever that movie is on that. that, that up yeah, it, the... it's a parody of what happened in 2020, part of 2021. So maybe... Uh, you would like to to watch that okay. movie. Don't look up. It's like okay. uh, it's something representing 
the politics and the virus. And ah. she is the main character in that movie. Ah. And uh, the next, the last Thank question yeah. that comes from Jasin says, uh, let's say an immigrant truck driver coming back from Laredo, Texas, and he get waved in. I think it's part of the same question before. Question, yeah. Yes. I would think it's okay, right? Uh, depends on how you came to America the first time, because most truck drivers, in order to do the truck, you need that CDL. To get that CDL, you need that uh, work permit or something. So depend, it depends on the case, I guess. But that's a very, I was thinking about truck driving when you asked that wave in question. That's a good question because you're the driver, you are waved in. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Miss Wong. We, we know you are so busy today as usual. So thank you so much for your time, for answering every single question. And we'll see you, uh, I think, next week here in Atlanta. Tomorrow you will be in um, the city of Columbus, right? Yes. You will be tomorrow in Columbus. Next week you will be in Atlanta and Nashville. So looking forward to seeing you. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank, thank you, you Ms. Wong. Yes. Thank you so much. And you don't forget to call. Uh, the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Attorney Margaret W. Wong. See you next time.